Hi everyone, I have all of my vintage fountain pens here today, so I thought I would do a little bit of a show and tell. I will start by saying that I am very new to this, so I'm not going to have any great insight about these and I I don't fully understand everything about these. So I may say some things wrong. I may leave some things out. So I'm just going to do my best and basically regurgitate all the information that was, was in the listings when I bought these. So feel free to, you know, leave comments and thoughts and information. Uh, you know, I, I always appreciate that. So I'll start off with this one. This is a Schaefer flat top. It's from the 1920s and I purchased this from Peyton Street Pens. I will have links below to the shops that I've purchased from. I will say I have purchased the most from Peyton Street Pens because they just tend to be so thorough and so knowledgeable and very easy to work with. They have great customer service. So I feel as a newbie, I feel the safest going with them because I know I can trust their work. All of my pens are fully restored. Uh, when I buy them, I pay a premium because I buy them restored because I just don't know how to do it myself because I'm just learning about all of the different nibs and filling mechanisms and, and you know all that good stuff. So this is from the 1920s and it's this beautiful jade green body and that is what initially attracted me to this. I really, really love uh, green. It's my favorite color and for some reason, I can't even tell you why, but I was attracted to the Schaefer brand and, and so I just went with that. I don't have a way to test any of these fountain pens beforehand, so... I basically, when I buy these online, I just have to go on looks and also because I don't fully understand all of the details in the descriptions about them. So I was like, you know what? I just have to go off what I like to look at and I really, really love flat tops. I'm not the biggest fan of like tapered shapes or the cigar shape. So, so apparently this is supposed to be a uh, an official lifetime model but it doesn't have the white dot on it that usually indicates that that's what it is this is a is it a medium nib medium Schaefer lifetime nib uh, yeah so uh, this came in beautiful condition it is such a pleasure to write with and it is extremely lightweight I was really surprised by that but uh, nonetheless, it's amazing to write with. It does have a lever filler, which I thought was so fun. You know, it has the ink sack inside and you pull this up so that it's perpendicular. And then you put the nib in your ink bottle and then push, uh, push the lever all the way down and it fills uh, the ink sack with the ink. And it's so, it's so much fun. I love how quirky these are with their different filling mechanisms. So that was my first one, you know, that really whet my appetite and obviously I haven't looked back. So there is the Jade Schaefer and I I really wanted to try all of those like top four brands for vintage fountain pens. So Schaefer, Waterman, Wall, and Parker. I have all of them except Wall, uh, those have been kind of difficult to to find in, in something that I'm looking for anyway. Uh, you know what, this one's dry, yeah. I used this to death because once I got this, it was, I was just dumbfounded and astounded at how magnificent this nib is. So this is a Waterman 0552 and a half and I believe all of those numbers indicate that it is uh, gold filled. The pattern on this is called Pansy Panel and it is circa 1920s. 
So it has a flexible fine nib. So it writes from fine to double broad. And the half means that it is uh, slimmer. It's, it's not as wide of a barrel that it normally comes in. And I love this so much. First of all, it's just gorgeous. This is an 18 karat gold filled finish. And this is black hard rubber. It is a lever filler as well. Oh my goodness. This is such a bouncy, lovely nib. I could not get enough of it. And I'm, I'm gonna put some more ink in it and keep on using it. And this made me realize that I need to be looking for some more flex nibs because I love how they write so much and they make my handwriting look really nice to my eye. Like I just feel like my handwriting comes out amazing when, when I use these nibs. So I had been eyeing this. So this is from Peyton Street Pens as well and was in beautiful condition and beautiful working order. This is a Waterman 14, and this is circa 1910, and it has this beautiful wood grain. It looks like mahogany, and I love this clip. Again, it has the ball at the end of it, which I just, that is so appealing to me. I just think it's so cute. So this is um, a hard rubber eyedropper pen. So. It doesn't have a screw on cap. It just, it's just a slip cap and it's an eyedropper. So, you know, the mechanism here is very, very simple. This just, you unscrew it and it's an empty barrel and you just put your ink in there. So I actually got this from vintagepen.net. This was actually uh, the first non Peyton Street pen purchase that I made. Uh, you can see where the barrel is faded here and it's darker here where the cap has protected it. But I had such a great experience with that shop. Uh, I believe it's run by Mauricio and I basically, I had to email him in order to purchase something off of his website. Oh my goodness, but this is a flex nib as well. It's a medium flex, so it goes from fine to double broad. It has the larger number four nib. And um, what does it say? It says a Waterman Ideal New York number four wet noodle broad stub nib. So uh, that that's what it says. I don't really know what every single one of those things mean, but I love this pen and it holds a ton of ink because it's it's literally this whole barrel. I will say one of the things that I have learned is that uh, restored and in working condition does not necessarily mean that the pen has been cleaned. So when I received this, I I assumed I would just need to clean it just in case because it doesn't have an ink sac that was replaced that I knew would be clean. I would be putting ink directly into this barrel. So I just wanted to clean it out just in case. And there was a ton of debris in there and also in the cap, just, you know, basically a hundred years worth of ink dried up and layered onto the surfaces inside there. So I really had to give this a very thorough cleaning and um, in another pen in my Parker, that was a whole other issue as well. But since we're on the Waterman's, uh, I'll do I have, oh no, yeah, I have two more. So even though I was first attracted to Schaefer, I found that now I, the most that I have are Waterman fountain pens, which... I wouldn't have predicted, but that's just part of the, the process in using these pens and understanding uh, how they feel. So this is a Waterman Goot. It is spelled G-O-U-T-T-E. So this is circa 1978, but it is this beautiful 
matte black. I don't know if that white background is uh, messing up how these look, but it is a matte black and it, this is basically the sexiest pen that I own, I think. Uh, it has a, a wonderful weight to it as well. And I love this really long gold clip. It is so sophisticated to, to look at. And I've wanted a matte black pen ever since I saw the, the matte black Pilot Vanishing Point. And uh, I had no idea that a pen like this existed and I was so happy to find it on Peyton Street Pens. That's where I bought it. So this is a fine 18 karat gold nib. Uh, and this was new old stock. So it, uh, you know, it, it was brand new in, in the package and it was just sitting uh, in a warehouse unused and super, super duper lovely to write with. And this has, uh, because it's not as old as everything else, this actually came with a converter. So there's a converter here and I believe there's, you can use like Waterman International cartridges as well, but it came with a converter. I love using my own ink. So Super easy to deal with, very, very similar to like all of the uh, modern fountain pens that I have. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned, but it's just a snap cap. So uh, it's just like this one actually. So there's no threads there or anything. Uh, so there's that one. The last Waterman that I have is this cute little short stubby thing. This is a Waterman 52V. So th this was, the kind of pen that I saw referenced over and over again as far as needing to try this out if you're going after vintage fountain pens. So uh, from my understanding, the 52 is just because it, um, it has a flex nib and apparently uh, flex nibs made today just don't have anything on the vintage versions. And I have never tried a modern flex nib, so so I have no comparison there, but I will say I am so surprised by how much I love and enjoy these flex nibs so, so much. Um, this is the olive ripple color. I found a lot of the Red Ripple. That seems to be very, uh, very easy to find and, and very popular. This one was a bit more rare, but I have a thing for greens and browns. So I knew that I wanted to have the Olive Ripple. So it took me a little while to find one that wasn't like really, really, really pricey and that had been restored. And so I actually got this one off eBay and I was so nervous about that, but I, in the listing, it said that this pen had been restored by Peyton Street Pens. So I just went ahead and took a chance. And I gotta say, I am thoroughly, thoroughly pleased with the whole transaction and so glad that I finally, finally have this. And this is Ebonite. So this is the Olive Ripple Ebonite body. and. You know, it, it's amazing. I love it. I'm so glad I have it. Uh, so those those are all of my Watermans. So I have these, these four Waterman fountain pens. And um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'll get some more. I'm looking for, I want a chased hard rubber. So I want a black pen with the etching in it. Um, I've wanted that one since I got this one and I just haven't found one that isn't uh, like really faded or, or anything like that. So anyway, that that's really the only other pen that I'm looking for at this point, but no rush. So I'll do my Parker next. So this is a Parker Duo Fold Senior. Uh, they have a junior, which is just shorter. So from everything that I had gathered, this was a very iconic type of vintage fountain pen with the 
red permanite. This is obviously orange, but the color is actually called red. So it's a red permanite body and it has gold filled trim. This has a blind cap for the button filler. So it does have the sack in here and then you just push the button to fill that sack. Okay, so this one I purchased from Fountain Pen Hospital. And uh, this one is from around 1928. So I will say that um, I would recommend if you purchased from Fountain Pen Hospital to email them and ask more questions about, about the listing because the listings are very, very short and there's only one photo and it's, it's just of the pen like, like this and it doesn't have really any descriptions of, of what it looks like, of where any dings, scratches, or brassing or anything like that is. So it only said that this was in near mint condition. And I was a little bit surprised when I received it. Now keep in mind, I don't have very much experience but based on what I had thus far, I, I was a little, I was a little surprised and I'm sure my opinions will change as I gather even more experience. But, uh, you know, this, the top I'm assuming should be, uh, as black as this. So there's some fading on this top part here. And I was a little taken aback because I know you probably maybe you can see it, but there's a nick right here, right there. And I was so nervous that that was a crack in the cap. And when there's a crack right there, that's just like a no-no. Um, but it's actually a huge nick in it right there. It does not go all the way through the, the cap. So, so thank goodness for that. Um, and then on the website, it says that all of their pens are in working order unless otherwise stated in, in their descriptions. So this was in working order, but it was incredibly, incredibly dirty. Um, the cap, like you couldn't even see the orange in there. There was layers and layers and layers of uh, ink just dried in there. And in the nib, there were layers and layers of ink just trapped between the feed and the nib. And I mean, there was no way that I could, could get it out. So what I ended up doing was I had to completely disassemble this pen and I was nervous. I, there were two, uh, YouTube channels, which I will link below that really helped me with it. So I had to take out the nib and the feed. I took out the ink sack. The ink sack had been replaced. Uh, so I took, I had to take that out. I had to take out the button, the button for the filler and then the pressure bar inside. And then I had to figure out how to put it all back together as well. And there was like a certain method for that. So I was a little upset that I, I had to do all of that because um, I do, pay a premium so that I don't have to do that but I obviously most likely misunderstood you know what what things meant so I will say though once I did disassemble this and fully clean it I was extremely proud of myself and I felt really really confident about dealing with vintage pens and perhaps you know I can come across a pen and figure out how to restore it myself. So, so there's that. I will say I don't really enjoy this nib. Um, it's very, very scratchy. I think that's just because it doesn't have like any tipping material left, which I did not know about either. You can hear it. It's, I mean, I'm not even pressing very, very hard and it's super duper scratchy. This is Tomoe River paper, by the way. And um, 
this, this is my least favorite. I really don't find that I go for this one that much. And I'm a little bit sad about that because I was really excited to get this just because I feel like it is such an iconic pen. So, so anyway, there's that, um, you know, the button filler is, is really fun. Um, and I'm, I'm glad to have it. Like I like looking at it. So I don't know. I think it just, the nib may need some work or something. I don't know. So anyway, the last one, this is my other Schaefer. So these are my two Schaefer babies. So this one is super, super cute. Um, and I'm surprised that I got this because as you can tell, I like really tall pens. You know, I started out wanting tall pens that were fairly slender. And then I got, you know, this fat pen. And then I thought, well, what the heck, I might as well go for these smaller, more portable ones. And then, um, you know, this one is obviously tapered on both ends. So just expanding what I, what I try and what I like. But this is a Schaefer Crest Deluxe Tuckaway. And it's beautiful. I, you know, the look of this is what is what drew me in. Uh, you know, it has this brown striped barrel and this, uh, it says one tenth, 14 karat gold filled cap and trim. So, um, yeah, so there's that, but it has these squiggly lines and it alternates between, you know, these straight lines and squiggly lines. I love that detail in it. It's so cute. You know, the other ones that I've seen have looked, you know, fairly plain. There's nothing wrong with that. But I loved how visually appealing and interesting this is with the striped barrel and then this this cap. So I super love this. It also has an interesting filler. Uh, it What is it called? A plunger filler. So it, you know, it fills in a really weird way, but it, it's so fun. I I enjoy it. Um, it also has such an interesting nib. So, uh, yeah, it's, look at that. That is so crazy. It's a Triumph nib, nib is that what it says? So it's a fine 14 karat two-tone Triumph nib. And, and it is fine. It's a fine nib. And I thought, you know what? I don't really, other than my Parker, I don't have one that's very, very fine at all. So I thought this would be a really great addition. And I never thought that I would find a tuck away that, uh, that I liked the look of. So it is really, really fine. And I love it. I love it for that, for that purpose. So when I want a fine nib, I can just go to this one and be happy. So anyway, uh, there's, there's all the samples. Um, here's all of the pens again, I'm pretty content with, with what I have right now. Like I said, I am looking for, you know, a, a chased hard rubber one, but, um, it, it's usually just a waiting game. I'm surprised I got all of these as fast as I did, but Peyton Street pens is just such an enabler. They update multiple times a week with new stock. So it, it's just incredible. So I've been able to find all of these things in a relatively short amount of time. Um, obviously I've shopped at three other places and um, I, I would say I've had really good experiences, um, but I was just taken aback a little bit by, by this one. So anyway, I know that was kind of, I was breezing over a lot of things, um, but I just wanted to, to show you what I currently have. And um, I just, I have a pull towards vintage fountain pens more than modern ones. And I just don't have the same interest in modern fountain pens like I do with these vintage ones. And it, you know, it's just a personal preference. I've just always been attracted to vintage things. I love the history that they carry with them. And I love being able to wonder who used these, what words did they write with them? I just think it, it lends something extra to when I'm using them to write in my own journal. They just make writing and journaling a richer experience for me. 
So I really, really love them. And I, I can't wait to get more when, whenever, you know, something crosses my path. So we shall see. Anyway, that's it for me. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. And I will see you again soon. Bye.